A thank you goes out to Tallgrass Tap House for allowing us to record this exclusive interview with Curtis Kelly and Coach Chris Lowry of Kansas State Basketball on top of the Tap House rooftop. Always enjoy the food and the vibes at Tallgrass, so thank you again for allowing us to record up top. Hope you enjoy the show. It's another edition of Coffee with Chris, this time with Curtis Kelly as well. Old school, you know, I mean, not old school, but he was old school. It is old school, school. you know, old school (laughs) to K-State enough. You know, it was a decade ago when you were at K-State, you know, a transfer in from UConn, you know, and played a big role on some teams in the, you know, early 2010s. So it's exciting to have you guys here. Obviously, it's been a while, been a while since me and coach been able to even get together and see each other in person to do one of these. And I'm just really excited to be here with you guys. So thank you guys for coming out. Oh, thanks. Obviously, we haven't. This is our first in-person coffee in a very long time. And obviously, whenever we do this, everybody wants to know what's going on with the team. Everybody wants to know how guys are doing. But um, we got a special guest today. We got some questions uh, lined up. K-State for this guy. legend Kirk Kelly, <laughs> Kells, as he likes to be called. So you know, and, and the fun thing about it is. He has so much wisdom to give our young guys, and he's been to where they want to go. You know, you want to you want to go deep in tournament, have those deep tournament runs, have the chance yeah. to go to the Final Four, and that's what he's done. So he's not on. Our players are not only getting it from our staff. Mm-hmm. Now they're getting it from a, from one of the grad assistants who's been there, who's been a pro for a long time, mm-hmm. and can he's walked in their shoes, yeah. and now he can talk to them. So uh, that's invaluable for a, a, a very young, impressionable team to have a guy like him who was a highly ranked player yep. um, who came and kicked ass here at K-State, got yep. us to the, five, the Elite Eight and played in that really historic Xavier game, man. And, um, you know, I ain't going to steal his thunder. I'll let him talk <laughs> no, the rest of the it. time. But but this is – we're excited about it and our fans should be excited about it. I do have, you know, a number of questions I want to ask you, Curtis. First yep. one is, he just said it, you know, you've been a pro for a long time. What's this decade been like, you know, since you graduated from K-State? A lot of basketball, man. Yeah. Um, What's the journey been like? The journey been, it's been a long journey. It's been a blessed journey, though. I mm-hmm. played across, across the world, really, Israel, Italy, Spain, France, Lebanon, Philippines. You know, I've been, I've been around, and uh, it's been a blessed journey, though, for sure. But just, you know, yeah. growing as a basketball player when I did play, mm-hmm. uh, trying to figure out life outside of college. Um, Stuff like that, man. You know, regular things that we all deal with. You know, life things we all deal with. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're back here at K-State. Obviously, you know, you played, too, early on with Shane. So I got to ask what that was like, you know, coming back to see Shane. You guys got to play with each other for a year. Obviously, Bronx as well is where you guys both grew up. So, I mean, what's that relationship like and how important was that to facilitate you in the role you're at right now? Um, I knew Shane since we was babies, you know, gaucho days. We played for yeah. the same AU team. Uh, we played the same high school team, Rice High School. Uh, I was four years, four or five years older than him. But uh, I watched him grow, and he watched me grow as well. Um, I'm proud of Shane. I'm proud of what he accomplished. I'm proud of what he accomplished right now. You know, it's, it's, it's really big to see a guy like that um, with that much intelligence and that much mm-hmm. IQ. Uh, to be in the position he's in, he's he's well deserving of it. Yeah. And um, you know, me and Shane definitely grew up in, in, in the Bronx and Harlem area, so we know we know the New York area well. And uh, just to uh, try to learn from a guy like CeeLo, yeah. you know, a legend like him. He called me a legend, but he's the real legend, <laughs> you know, on, 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 in, in many aspects. Yeah. Um, so just to learn from them guys and try to get the basketball knowledge for for life after basketball, you know, because I definitely want to pursue a career in coaching. I definitely want to hopefully one day get in these guys' footsteps. I'm going to try my hardest to do that. So it's good to learn from guys like this, yeah, for sure. What's it like to, Coach, what's it like to see him out here, you know, with Shane and and the guys? Do you see him uh, a future in coaching for Curtis Kelly? Oh, absolutely. I think he has ability to go from teacher coach to cheerleader yeah. all in the same play literally a guy can do something be teaching him then he can go and he's cheerleading him then you know just helping him understand what that play meant because sometimes as a young guy one play can decide everything yeah and, and getting guys to understand um, how hard you got to do something or how precise you mm-hmm. have to do something in order for somebody else to get something positive happen to him and Kurt's great with that it's not always about you 
being a good teammate means that you have to be the best teammate and cheerleader for your guy because his success is your success. And that's what kind of him and Shane and Body is that they're the same in that in in instance where they, they both are very rah-rah mm -hmm. in support of the guys, but it can quickly flip in the teacher. Yeah. And that's something that young guys don't always have right away. They want to just overpower you with information and why you should do it instead of having a relationship with them and being able to talk to them why you do it. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a good thing. So, you know, looking forward to, to continue to help him grow as a play, as a coach. Um, and, and I think that's the, the biggest thing. When you can learn to put your own personal career aside mm -hmm. and say it ain't about me anymore and then go right into helping kids, yeah. that's when you know it's going to be successful. You dwell on the fact that, you know, I was a good player all the time. Mm -hmm. They feel that. Well, you was a good player, but you ain't trying to help me. Yep. So, Kurt, right away, he's, 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 he's gotten into their world and is helping them get better. So, Kurt, what do you what do you think of Manhattan? Uh, you know, now in today's day and age, you know, you guys were we we got to see each other out there on the field. You know, Saturday, first time I got to meet you, which was awesome. And um, what, you know, what's that experience like to you know be out on the field, see that that live game, and and be back in the K State atmosphere of things, and and be able to experience that? It feel great. Um, you know, a lot has changed. It's been a lot of changes on, 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 on different accords. You know, it's a lot of change in the yeah. K State family, um, a lot of change as far as the sports, a lot of change as far as the rules. Everything seems to be changed. So I'm just trying to get adjusted, trying to learn as much as I can. Um, but I'm just happy to be back, man. The fans are always great. The fans have always been great to me. Um, you know, I think the, the main thing is, is that I want to bring that, that feel that we had um, for so many years at K-State, I want to yeah. bring it back. I think the last two years with COVID and stuff like that, we haven't had no fans inside the gym. You really have no, the support, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. with, with that dying out, I think that this year is going to be the year we yeah. get that support back, fans coming in Absolutely. loud and cheering, and them guys get to feed off their energy. So I'm excited. I'm excited for them, most of all. And I'm excited for them to see how it is to really like play for the Cats yep. and get that energy back. Yeah. Yep. I want to keep the focus on Kurt, but I also want to ask you, Coach, because it's been a minute since you've been able to, you know, have recruits on campus. We can't talk about them specifically, but what's it like to now be able to have recruits back on campus and show your guy how, you know, how it's done when you're showing recruits around campus? Right. I think it's huge because it's a, it's a part of what makes this place special is the fan support, um, the true family feel like when we say family that's real yep. like we, we we say it all the time and other people say it but we live it you know and i think that's the biggest thing <laughs> that's a, my backpack real quick my computer's in there here let me see <laughs> yeah you gotta get Thank that you. i appreciate <laughs> it too. that means you're a little nervous no, right yeah you don't need that going down i'm just glad I, yeah mm -mm. i'm glad i knew to get I it out because it would be too good yeah it's a little chilly chill right that fall coming see all right we good. We back. We uh, back. So you basically. I go back. So yeah. you know we're basically it's a family, and you know we don't talk it. We also live it. And I think that's the biggest thing that recruits get to see is is enjoy the fact that they're walking down the student section and kids are doing the cannonball and our and our current players are high five and all the all the students and going crazy and yelling out the recruits' names. Like that stuff is important because. It appeals to the ego of a player. Yeah. You know, oh, they know me here. Wow. Like, I didn't know they knew me. So having that aspect, and I think the biggest thing with Kells, when he's since he's been back, yeah. his favorite saying is, "Man, they didn't have that when I was here." <laughs> <laughs> he's going everywhere he's going. He's like seeing stuff. Man, we didn't do this when I was here. Yeah. yeah. And man, this building wasn't here when I. So that that's the beauty of it. When you come back, you want to be proud of your alma yeah. mater, and, it, and, and and in order for you to do that, it has to grow. Yep. It's definitely grown since he's he's been a, been gone with the practice facility, all the upgrades everywhere, all over campus. And uh, as an alum, that makes you very proud. How much has you being a pro the last you know decade and in the basketball you know higher level of basketball after college helped you grow as a player and you know a coach that you want to be one day? A lot of maturity. A lot of maturity, um, you know, I, I learned how to, to, to prepare for games, how to prepare myself for games. Mm -hmm. You know, the overseas basketball realm is a little different from the United States. Well, yeah. it's a lot different, actually. You know, so I had to get adjusted to that. So for me, to try to get adjusted to uh, dealing with the coaching realm, um, it's not as bad as I thought. You know, you just got to pace yourself and learn. Just like I did when I first got overseas I was as a rookie, just like I did when I was a young basketball player. Mm -hmm. You got to take your time and learn. 
and uh, try to find good leaders, right? Try to yeah. find good leaders, try to find people that you can follow after, like CeeLo, like, like Shane, mm -hmm. like uh, Coach Weber and uh, Coach Hendo. Them guys, I just follow their lead, man, and, and I think I'll be fine, because they're fine. Yeah. So, yeah. The CNOA, Coach Shane Southwell ascended, excite you at all? I mean, I don't think that's regular, the typical way you go from Rob, uh, Robert Morris straight back to K-State, but, mm -hmm. you know, his ability to rise in the ranks that quickly, does it at least give you some you know, confidence that you can you can get there your way as well? Uh, yeah, it gives me some confidence, but Shane is just a special yeah. IQ, you know, so he's very deserving for his for his journey. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if my journey will be the same, but um, I'm gonna give everything I can so that I can have some of the success that he has had. But uh, Shane's journey is because of his IQ, his yeah. intelligence with the basketball game, and um, my, my, but my, well, my stance is is my experience. Yeah. I have I have experience. You know, I play eight seasons over overseas, um, and also there's not too many guys at six nine coaching the basketball that I see. Yeah. So I also have that in my favor as well. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, like I said, you know, but Shane's journey is his journey. I know that um, mine may not go the same route, mm -hmm. and I'm prepared for that. Mentally, um, I'm very prepared for that. You know, if I gotta pace it and I gotta take my time, then it is what it is. But Shane did have a big leap, yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm super proud of his leap. Um, but one thing I did learn from Shane with his process is that it could be done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you take the right steps, you follow the right people, um, you learn from the game, um, you take your, your expertise and your experience and, and follow it to the other kids and other young student athletes. Yeah. I learned that it could be done, though, for sure. Mm -hmm. People that don't know what a graduate assistant does for, for the basketball know. team, yeah, tell me. I had to learn. Yeah, learning. yeah, you're still learning. I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. Still new to this, but what are the kinds of things that you will be asked to do, and some some stuff you've been asked to do already? Uh, some, you know, I think it's just a it's a role, yeah. and um, you gotta play your role and understand it's a role. You know, when, it's kind of like um, joining the team and you're not the star player anymore. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You gotta kind of adjust to that role and, and see where you can contribute. And that's all I'm doing. You know, I'm just trying to see what I can contribute. Whatever these guys ask me to do, I'm going to do. Um, I think that's my soldier mentality when it comes to how I think and how I think of a team. I think of it as, as a soldier formation. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm playing my role, role as a soldier. You know, and yeah. I got to listen to my generals. Uh, I got to follow my generals. Yeah. Um, and I got to believe in, in the guys and that they, they, they put before me also. So I just, I just play my role, man. Um, I think even with K-State back in the day, I played my role. Yeah. You know, I, I let Jake be the star of the team, and um, I just let my talent speak for itself. You know, I, tr I didn't try to implement too much of a, you know, rah-rah, uh, big energy on yeah. everything. I try to just play my role, be patient, and follow suit, for sure. What, is, what does Kirk Kelly bring to the table as a graduate assistant? I think the biggest thing is his love for the game, and that shows immensely. Um, you know, right away, you know, I tell him, if he, if he thinks something, say it. If he if he feels a way that a player should be doing something, tell him. Because when you have the gift to relate to people, you need to use that 24-7. Yeah. You should never hold it in. Because when you can talk to a person and have mm -hmm. them change their point of view quickly, like he can, that's a gift. You know, the gift to being able to turn a kid's mind completely around from being emotional about it to being to turn it and make it be a less emotional, more professional approach to, to getting things done. Because you're gonna, like the whole thing is, you, whenever you do things right, something right's gonna happen to you. And I think as a player, sometimes you get caught up with the coaches are always trying to tell me what to do and, and to correct me this way. Well, no, we're just trying to win and we're trying to help them be better. And Kurt's great with going behind from what we talk to about the coaches, I mean, to the players and easing them into why it's right. Yeah. And, and that's a that's a very hard thing to be able to do immediately, and he's got that. And I want to know, Kurt, you know, this team's got three transfers that'll be asked to do some stuff. You were a transfer. Yep. What was that process like when you were transferring from UConn to K-State and you had instant success, you know, scoring 10 points a game your first season for K-State? What was that like, the process 6. like? And how are you going to be, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 11, exactly. And how are you going to be able to, you know, Allow that to help you relate to some of these transfers on the squad right now. Um, you gotta, you guys gotta take what you what you learned from before, and um, bring a little flair to it. Yeah. But at the same time, you gotta be hungry, man. Mm -hmm. You know, success comes from the team in a whole. It doesn't yeah. come from just one player. 
And some of the Trent is gonna have to play a role. Some of the Trent is gonna have to adjust to not being that guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But one thing about it is, is if you can understand what winning is about and what it takes to win, then they'll help. But that's one thing UConn told me. It told me, it told me how to win for sure. Yeah. You know, even though I ain't play as much as I did at K State, it definitely told me how to win. So um, I took that winning style and that winning mentality and just brought it with me. Yeah. But uh, for them guys, them guys are gonna be to be just fine. You know, they all they all smart kids. They all work really really hard. Um, they work extremely hard actually. Mm -hmm. They always in the gym. So I think they'll be fine. I think the biggest thing is is just listening, listening to, to new former coaches and um, paying attention and just trying to give everything they can, you know what I mean? I think like a guy like Ish, for example, a guy like Ish came from Wake Forest and they like his position. Mm -hmm. He had a, he in a new position. So one thing I try to implement with him is, to try to tell him is, is that first of all, calm down, pace it, you know what I mean? Think it first, and then everything else is gonna take care of itself as long as you're working hard, you know what I mean? I, I, I try to tell him that. And then, yeah. for other guys like uh, Keith, you know, Keith came from success. He was that guy on the team. Mm -hmm. He was the main guy on this team. Yep. So now you go from that to playing with guys where you're not gonna be the main guy. So when you come into practice, the days that's not your days or the days that's not your days where you feel the best, you gotta learn how to give something else to, to, to the game, give something else to your teammates. So I try to tell them little things like that, you know what I mean? But um, it's interesting transferring. You know, you're in a yeah. new atmosphere, new coaching. Um, and you gotta adjust, you gotta adjust fast. It's, fast. it's, it's quick, you gotta adjust quick. So. That's what I definitely tell him. The final adjustments very fast. You know, you're similar. I mean, you brought him up. I want to. I want to ask you what what you think Ish brings to the table in the little bit of time you've been around him as a transfer, um, and played a similar position to what you got. You know, yep. and similar skill set. What what does he bring to the table? Well, he he has an amazing skill set. Um, he has an amazing skill set, amazing ability to shoot it, put on the floor. He could do any and everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But uh, what I try to tell Ish is is that he got to get tougher. You know, um, you gotta get more physical. Yeah. Cause the Big 12 is very physical, and I just let him know that um, everything, everything gonna be fine as long as you keep working hard. I think it's gonna be a special guy. You know, what I mean, he he got he has a lot to work on, but he's a hard worker. He listens. He's a great listener. And just like today, you know, in practice today with CeeLo, uh he did most of everything right. You know what I mean? And if he didn't do it right, he asked the questions before he made the mistake. Yeah. You know, things like that is what I notice about him. But it's got some special talents, man. He just gotta put it all together and keep keep working hard. But definitely have to get more physical and more stronger for sure. Yeah. Is this kind of the stuff you were talking about? You know, he can already relate with some of these guys coming in. And I mean, how important is that? And and what do you see out there, literally on the floor? Him talking with Ish and these guys. Do you see them uh, learning from this stuff that he's got? Well, I think the biggest thing is, as a coach, you don't want to ever have to worry about what your younger guys are telling the players. Yep. And we, we like, already you can tell he's gonna tell them the right thing. And that's important. So I don't have to go behind what he said mm -hmm. to make sure that whoever understands what we're trying to get him to do. So that's that's so important because he's in a position where we don't want him to be their friend, yeah. but he's gotta still have a great relationship with them as well. So learning how to balance that, being a confidant, a coach, and, uh, and somebody I can mm -hmm. learn from as well. All three of those things are very hard for young GAs to, to learn because he can get on them too. Yeah. And, and that is the hardest thing when you're getting into coaching, when you have to tell somebody that you really like, hey, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. That's the wrong way to do it. We don't do that here. And, and I think he's already got that and he's already done it. So they respect him even more for the relationship by him having the ability to tell him that's wrong as opposed to always telling him you're good, you're great. Yeah. You know that, that's important. You know, I love to I love to ask you know former players that we've had on. You know, what are some memories you know from your time playing? Uh, just some stuff that whether it's beating Kansas or or whatever you got. If you did beat Kansas, I don't know. If I, you did. Did. You I did. You did. Okay. Did so that might be I up there on the list. Just tell me some <laughs> of did. your favorite memories from. Uh, from beating yourself. Kansas is definitely one of them. Yeah. <laughs> we got to put that up there. Uh, beating number one Texas is probably very legendary. The Elite Eight game. Um, with, 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 with double, I think yeah. double or triple overtimes, you know what I mean? That that was a, one of them. Um, I had so many memories, man, but one of my, my, if I could put it all into one pot, one of my main memories is just building brotherhoods and yeah. friendships that last for till now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Tay, yeah. uh, Paul, uh, any of them guys could call on me and I could call on them. And, and that's deeper than 
um, all the memories I had playing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's a lot of a lot of things with the fans and a lot of interaction with the fans that I enjoyed. But it's just that brotherhood, man. And that's what I try to relate to these young guys is that, you know, the only way we're going to do it is do it together. You know, you got to create a brotherhood. You got to stick together. Because uh, in, in a battle, in the midst of the war, man, you're going to need each other. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to really need each other. And when the time's not good, you got to tap your brother on the shoulder and tell him what he's doing right, what he's doing wrong, help him out, pick him up. Mm -hmm. I just try to get that brotherhood, man. And Because that brotherhood is probably my biggest memory. Oh. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> The wind is going crazy up yeah, here. It's, you know, it's you I, I wish you had a hoodie or something. The crazy you know, stuff that is. <laughs> I know the wind. Yeah, if we would have known the wind was going to be this crazy, we might have yeah. done it down in the basement. But nah, anyway, good. it's lovely. Uh, still glad I got you guys up here. A few more questions I want to throw out there before we, before we move on, you know, and enjoy a dinner and shut this recording off. But coach, I just want to ask you, you know, I, I do want to ask just two two team questions, if you don't mind, yeah. because we haven't been able to talk about uh, the team in a little while, and there's two guys in particular I got on my mind that we haven't been able to talk about, Please you can talk him. about them too. Please ask him. I, I, I love him when, when you pick his head. Yeah, the first one is Celta Miguel. I mean, he's a guy that was gone over the summer. Yeah. I want to, and we didn't get to, the last time we talked, we didn't really get to talk about what he's been doing at K-State, because he was at Olympic qualifiers overseas. Right. I mean, if, if, if someone wants to say that was a hindrance, I think it's crazy. But I want to ask you, do you think that was a hindrance to his game? Or is that something that he can expand his game on? And what have you seen from him since he's been back at practice? Well, anytime you can play with men, it helps you. Because it already improved his IQ. And the stuff we used to get on him as a freshman, he doesn't do now. Yeah. Because he saw every day going against men, they take, they destroy little kids. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what he had to learn. And he, he called back right away and said, Coach, I was right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get it. And so... He's come back and he doesn't have the turnovers he had yeah. as a true freshman coming out, thinking he was right all the time, you know, thinking that I'm good with the ball. He's got to learn to be special with mm -hmm. the ball. And that's the difference. Like, he does a great job of taking care of the ball now. Uh, he's a leader. Uh, it was it was great for him. It was not a hindrance at all. It was great for us. That one of our guys was even in Olympic qualifiers. And his improvement has been drastic. He's going to shoot the ball better. He's already a, a big-time defender. His body's better. So I just think that people will be surprised in his total package that has grown as a player. You know, he'll be able to do stuff. And, and going left was a huge thing for him. Yeah. And I think you're going to see all that coming to realization. We got we coached those guys so hard, and they were freshmen, and we were so critical of them mm -hmm. that we had to understand this is their first you know, time in college basketball. And we didn't practice with them. And he had COVID. And he missed so much time. Yeah. So where he is now, that missing COVID all the time, he had to sit out from, you know, trace testing as well. Mm -hmm. He made up with grown men. And so his IQ got better. He learned how to almost be a professional around. He was the youngest dude. He was the only teenager yeah. on the team. So he had to act accordingly. So that was huge for him. And, it, and I think you're going to see him be a much better player. I want to get Kurt in here about ask about the team as well but i've got one more guy i want to pick your brain about and that is maximus edwards another guy who had you know the, the tibia issue that is finally healed up and he's back at practice what what has he been like the true freshman and and um how's his progressions coming i think with max um he's a high flyer and to be grounded for that long of time when he had the when he had that surgery uh on his shin i think the biggest thing for him it it made him see basketball difference and yeah. when he came back he completely slowed down his motor didn't run because he was still timid about jumping and running and doing what he does best and that's his gift to the game you know being yep. a hard hard out a straight line driver offensive rebounder transition nightmare like we're having to push and prod him to play fast again where he's being really cautious and that's understandable for a person who's never been injured before yep. and uh you know he, he's one of those kids who has a big time smile. He's always, he's an unbelievable teammate. Mm -hmm. And he's great to be around. Um, you know, we're, we're just happy he's happy. Yeah. Because, you know, a happy player is a good player. And he knows he's not there yet. And he tells you all the time, I know I got, I got to get better. And, and anytime you have a young person that tells you that before you can even get to that part of why you're, what you're talking to him about, you know he's got a chance. So. Uh, you know, we just think Max is going to have the ability to be a lockdown defender, mm -hmm. transition nightmare, and he, and he can easily, he's going to be a good stationary three-point shooter. Um, right now, some guys can move and shoot. He's one of those guys that's learning to fill a different role and play a different position than he's ever played in his life. 
a, a true wing, like not a not a forward. Yeah. You know, so now he's moved to that wing exclusively, and he's learning to be on the wing. So, I think his growth and development is good because he has great big brothers on the team that'll help with that. I want to ask you about the front court, or yeah, the front court and. and some of what you've seen, the other freshman, Logan Landers, coaches talked a lot about him to me and you know what he brings to the table. And some of that is, you know, his discipline and stuff. Have you seen some of that discipline in Logan Landers and in uh in, in a guy that similar again skill set and size to what you bring to the table? Yeah, um I, I think Logan it has has he's somewhat a perfectionist. He always in his head, he always thinking about how he could do things better. And but that's gonna lead him some great places. Uh, I, I believe in and due time, Logan's gonna be one of them K State greats. That's how I feel. Yeah. Just, just all for uh, his his will to learn and um, just something intangible that he brings to the game. Yeah. Um, he, he he's, he's gonna have to learn a lot. You know what I mean? Got to be patient with him. Got to learn a lot. Uh, he has a lot, a long way to go. But I think Logan's gonna be a, a really good player. Yeah, I like Logan. And then I just want to hear your overall thoughts. You know, you haven't been around the team a long time, but your, you know, overall initial thoughts coming in to this squad and seeing what they bring to the table. Um, overall, what do you think of this team? That that well, came, hopefully that, CeeLo don't kill yeah. me for this. You know, hopefully he doesn't. <laughs> I, just think, I, I just really think yeah. it's, go, it's gonna be special, yeah. man. I think it's one of those special teams. Like it's, it, you know, when I came in at Tranford. Guys are always in the gym. Guys are always working, and I get that same feel. Even when I came um, and I and I did a camp with, with with these guys, you know, what I mean, it's the first time me meeting CeeLo and Bruce Weber, and just seeing Dean and Barry them guys, you know, what I mean, I get the same type of yeah. feel with this team. I don't know when. That's the that's the most interesting part. I, I can't I can't give it guys yeah. uh, uh, a specific it's a time this year space, too, but so I, yeah, no. but I just think it's gonna be really special. You uh -huh. know, Mark Smith is really good. Yeah. Like he's he's amazing to me. His strength and his ability to play multiple positions, and his shooting ability, and um, the fact that he's gonna have more opportunity this year to show more what he got. Like just little pieces that we have. It's gonna be really a special team, I believe. Um, yeah. it's, just, it's just about when. And I think it's up to them guys. But uh, also, I think the, the coaching staff, they're very hungry. Um, I think the coaching staff kind of see what I see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even though they probably won't admit it to those guys. But they see a lot of things that I see. So uh, they're going to be working hard to make sure those guys are prepared and um, and they're ready to, to have an explosive season. I think it's going to be a special season. A few more things. And then, you know, we can do another coffee with Chris <laughs> before the season. <laughs> Because, and, and, you know, really, really dive into some of this even more. But I want to ask you about the, the studs from last year, both of your first you. What do you think of Nigel Pack and Davion Bradford, um, your initial thoughts on what you've seen from them in practice? Um, I really I really like those two. Um, those two is also very special players. I think Nigel reminds me a lot of Jacob. Yeah. Um, and, he, and he has some, and I, I was telling CeeLo, he has some things about his skill that Jacob didn't have at that age. You know what I mean? I watched Jacob as a sophomore. Yeah. Jacob didn't have certain things that he has, but Jacob has certain things that Nigel don't have. You know, that dog, that, that, that a little bit more fight, a little bit more toughness. But um, I think Nigel is a really special player. I think he's like, um, the, uh, he leaves, he leaves K-State with a good future. Mm -hmm. um, Davion as well, you know what I mean? Big guy, he has a lot to learn. Um, my, my main concern with Davion is, is, and I pray every night he stays healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, because if he do, he, he'll help us win a lot of games as well. Um, Davion is the type of kid where um, I didn't have the, the special gifts that he had. Big hands, being that size, being that, uh, having that ability to move for that size. I didn't have those things. I'm kind of envious that he's yeah. so blessed with those things. But Davion's going to be another special player, man. He just got to stay focused, continue to be locked in, continue to work. And um, I think the, the, the ceiling for him is very, very high. I got one more for you and then one more for Kurt. Because <laughs> I want to ask you about Nigel and Davion. How much different are they from this time last year to right now? That's all I got for you. I mean, the, the biggest difference, they they were they hadn't played a game of college basketball and were a little nervous and scared and really didn't understand. Yeah. Now they understand. And now they've had great success and great failure, too. And mm -hmm. in order, in order to, to, to grow, you got to have great failure. And those dudes have, have been a part of complete failure. 13 in a row, we lost. Yep. Then they grew from that, and whatever they five out of 60 in the, the year, uh, changed their perspective of winning and their perspective of 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 what it means to be a good college basketball player. Um, you know, Nigel's super high IQ, elite ability to shoot the basketball. 
um, elite understanding of how to be a good teammate. Very good. Davion, feet and hands for a guy that are, it's not normal either. They're just a big athlete or they're a below the rim, can catch it, can't move guy. He's got a combination of both. If we can get him physically where he needs to get, you're going to see him do some really special stuff. So um, both of them want to win. Both of them are, are great people. Um, and you, you having them around is enjoyable. Um, and that's that's what it's about. When you're, when you're supposed to best guys are always around and always in the offices and always having fun and you can see them have a smile on their face after workouts and when they're working out, that lets you know they're happy. Yep. And, and when they're happy, they'll compete and do things for you out of the ordinary. And that's where we got to convince them that they can do those things 24-7. The last thing is always the first one to everything. <laughs> He gets there before everybody yeah. for everything. Just like special things like that, I know it's about him. Yeah. It's interesting. He's an interesting kid. You said that was Nigel? Is yes. that some of the stuff that made like you correlate with Jacob too? That that desire to Well, well to that, get that's a part of being a leader. Yeah. Being on time yeah. and, and doing the right things. That's mm -hmm. a part of being a leader. Just because you don't vocalize it doesn't mean that it's not a part of being of leadership. Absolutely. You know what I mean? But and yes, yeah, th those things are things that he has. Mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the type of the spirit, the, charism the charismatic energy, you know what I mean? Always making guys laugh, always smiling around them. Yeah, it's a lot of comparisons I would say to Jacob. But um, you know, Nigel got his own his own path that he has to walk, and uh, I just think he's going to be a special special player. Him and Davion both, I think they're going to be special players. Last thing I got for you is I want you to gush about Coach Weber, Coach Lowry, mm -hmm. Coach Henderson, Coach Shane. You know what what do these guys bring to the table and I mean, how, how, how much do they bleed purple? <laughs> well, they bleed purple a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I think they, they, all of them has a, a, a knack and a knowledge to win. Um, I think all of them has such, such experience, um, such high IQ. Um, and one of the main thing about all of them is, is that they love and care for their guys, you know what I mean? I didn't play for Bruce Weber. Yep. And uh, I didn't play for CeeLo, so it just be it be putting me in the thought process. Like, imagine if I play for them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> how much how much love it'll be then? And yeah. I get enough love from these guys for real. But uh, yeah, it's it's that love, man. That love for the players, that love for their staff, that that that, ki that kindness, um, and that care. You know, it's it's a special thing. And I, I always commend them and tell them how much I appreciate them for being how they are. Um, yeah, them, they, they all great people, man. Really great people. Absolutely. Well, that's going to finish us up. I always appreciate the time. I had some technical difficulties, really some weather difficulties, <laughs> taking some things out and running us a little longer than we wanted. But always appreciate Coach Lowry. Curtis Kelly, hope to be able to talk to you again as well. Appreciate it. Um, really, really excited for the season and what we got, got in store. So thanks again. Thank thanks. you. Appreciate it.